So there's one more thing I wanted to talk to you about when we look at the Bohr model, and that's kind of how it fits in with um, the periodic table. And so I, I showed you in the last video how um, the, the number of electrons at each level corresponds to the number of elements in each row, at least when the, row, when the number of elements changes in that row. Um, but there's something else that, that happens that I wanted to, to show you here. So if you look at the Bohr models for the elements, the first 18 elements, and you look at them in terms of the periodic table. So what I've got here is the different Bohr models set up like the periodic table is set up. Now you've got this space here on the regular periodic table that I've, of course I've condensed just to fit everything on the, on the page. But these are your, um, your Bohr models. And so a couple of things happen, a couple of patterns show up in the periodic table. So if you look at the first row, um, the first row, hydrogen and helium, each just have two, have one, sorry, um, energy level. So row one, one energy level. For all of the elements in row two, you've got a full first energy level, and then you've had to add the second energy level. And of course, one electron is added for each step that you take over because you're always increasing by one proton and also one electron for every, every step you take. Um, but all of these have two energy levels. So starting here with only one electron in that second energy level, all the way out till you get it filled up with eight electrons here. So row two, two energy levels. If you get to row three, now you have, guess what? Three energy levels, same thing. First and second energy level are filled up and we start to fill up that third energy level. Now, this pattern continues as you go through row four, five, six, all the way down the periodic table. The pattern changes a little bit. They don't fill up in exactly the same order, and we'll get to that when we talk about, um, when we talk about electron configurations. But for now, you know, the periodic table, you know, it wasn't set up to match the Bohr model, but it turns out the Bohr model matched the way the periodic table was set up. The periodic table became, came before the Bohr model. One other thing to notice, um, you may have heard about this or learned about this in middle school, and that is the number of valence electrons that atoms have. And so valence electrons are the number of electrons in the outermost energy level. And so if you look at the rows, sorry, the columns this time, up and down, the rows are across, those are the periods, the columns are called families. And so if you look at that outermost ring on the Bohr model, for the first column, one electron, one electron, one electron. For the second column, the outermost ring, two electrons there, two electrons there. For the third column, three electrons. For the fourth column, four electrons, and so on. So there is another relationship the number of levels is the same in each row, and the number of outermost electrons is the same for each vertical column. And so all of that information really is encoded in the periodic table. So again, just one more relationship that we wanted to, to look at. 